Tire Power Storewide Super Sale gives you the power to save on a huge range of Kumo tyres. You can buy three and get one free on selected Kumo passenger car and SUV tyres. Tire Power Storewide Super Sale is now on. Visit tyrepower.com.au or call 13 21 91. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4ddoors.com.au. Breakfast with Kane and King. Oh, it's catchy. That's a bit of pitbull for your Friday morning. We are here. We are excited and happy to be here with a new show, Kane and Kingy. Thank you for coming along for the ride. We want your interaction. We want your debate and we want you to join us each and every Friday morning. What a big one to start today. Our McCafe menu is our official coffee partner. Captain's Day on Kane and Kingy. Callum Mills is the newest captain of the Sydney Swans. He is going to join us. Big boy Ben McAvoy captaining the Hawks for the second year in a row. He will have a chat to us before 8 o'clock. There's a whole heap of things we need to get through this morning. We want your calls and your texts. The ENS open lines, one 736 736 And the temper text, you know it well, 0433981116. The smartest analyst in the game, one of the brightest minds, is along for the ride with me. His name is David King. King, good morning. Morning, Cornsy. I'm looking forward to this. I really am. It's been a, a long time coming, you and I getting together. And, you know, the, the people have demanded that I straighten you up. You, you, you can get a little bit aggressive, a little bit uh, over the top at times. But aggressive. I love it. I do love it. Um, I think you and I will work well together. I think that I, I know we attack the game and we, we can be critical of different things from time to time. And uh, whether it's people or coaches or players or whatever, and just raise some topics, which I love. But we're, di- we're very different people. I mean, you're a marathon running, non-drinking type, and I'm probably the complete opposite of that. Um, and I, <laughs> Coxie's on board already. Uh, I just think this. And what of, are you? This, oh, well, I'm the complete reverse. I, no, I, I, I you can't that, stand man. a drink, and I can't stand a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this will go well. I think that uh, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into footy when it rolls around. No doubt we'll do some previewing and those sorts of things, but just getting your view on on, on general sport. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. And we're going into Melbourne. We're going to Adelaide. We're going into WA. So shout out to Mark McGowan, who's listening to us this morning. We're going to Tassie, the top end (laughs) Sunrise. We're going to Bunbury, Geelong, Bendigo, Ballarat, and of course, all around the country and the world on the SEN app. So um, we're, as I said, we're thrilled to have you along for the ride and we'd love for you to get involved nice and early this morning. Uh, But you've come in all guns blazing. So we had, we had a meeting, um, a little planning meeting the other day. And, um, you know, this is the Kane and Kingy show, how we're going to structure it and what are we going to talk about and who we're going to get on all, all that sort of garbage that you do behind the scenes, the boring stuff, but you're not happy with something. What, no, what you... look, you say we had a meeting, <laughs> we had a meeting. It was, the work was already done. Everything was already done. I mean, the, the, the show had already been t- named after you, <laughs> Kane and Come you, you, you all, I Great had, pleasure, Corn. Uh, corn. It was going to be the Corn program, Corn <laughs> Squared, Kane, and you couldn't quite get Chad over the line. But Kane, how did it work out? How come Kane comes before King? King well, always comes first through history. King Henry, King Edward, <laughs> King James. Well, I think the powers that be thought, who's most likely to say the dumbest thing? Oh, so, when, so when we roll out the headline on social media, it's just easy. Oh, it's Kane yeah, again. So I think that's what happened. And then... We tossed the coin and I didn't kick we into did the wind. I didn't. I did not kick into the no. wind like Trent Cochin. That's just how it happened. It was We're already. Done, it was already done. You'd already got in there first. You're very good. You're very well, good. and and this is what sort of happened. So Kyle Sandlands, um, uh, we know him well. Uh, King Kyle, there you go. That's what they call him. He, he was not happy about something on his his show. And this is sort of a glimpse into what happened behind the scenes with David King. Let's let's have a bit of a listen to <laughs> Kyle storming out the other day. We're not I here thinking. Listen, just turn your mic off, cock. <laughs> You're finished. Yeah, get out. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. What are you? I don't understand. Like, we you don't, don't have to understand. Well, he could be a that. horrible person. No, I you said, didn't. I said it. I said that I'm she going might to have. Join. Do the show by yourself. What a <laughs> show it'll be. Do the show by yourself. What a show it'll be. Is your almost exact words. I, hey, I heard you did ask to do this show by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, missed out. But no, nah, this will be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it, Cornsy, to be, to be 
perfectly honest. Mm, when have you stormed out of a work meeting? Oh four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen. I, I had the, the the drama that I've spoken about before with with Matty Primus in the in the sort of two thousand and eleven era Kingy and the sort of wanted to move on some of the senior players. I got caught up in that and sort of happened halfway through the year and came towards my exit meeting towards the end of the year and I I knew the coach didn't want me there for the following year. I was like, how am I going to attack the next two years? Which I had in my contract, what, what are we going to do? So I sit down and, and a lot of people wonder what happens in these exit meetings at the end of the year for players. And if you've had a good year and the team's going well, usually, as you know, pretty pretty positive. If not, I mean, you win four games like I think we did in 2011 and the coach wants you out. It's not that friendly. Um, so the the fitness boss, Cam Falloon, sat me down. He's gone through some of my GPS numbers and things like that. You've got the stats man going through, you know, the, the areas that you've you've improved on stats-wise and I've just said, guys, just put your effing stats away. The coach doesn't want me here. I don't want to be here. I'm going to be the first to leave and the last to arrive. And I got up and slammed the door and com- completely spat the dummy. Really? And yeah, yeah com- completely Kyle Sandlands it and spat the dummy. And I, I don't think – so then the season – so then you go away on your nine weeks holiday and – I think I played Call of Duty on the PlayStation for about eight weeks of those. I was depressed. You, Lucy couldn't get me off the couch. I was flat. A real real sort of good fun to be around kind of guy. And then the preseason rolled around. I don't think I spoke to him for, oh, for probably the first two months of the preseason until we sort of crossed paths in the corridor and said day. So that was my Kyle Sandlands moment. Have you, have you ever had a disagreement with someone at like a really big blow up where you've walked out of a meeting or you've you've butted heads with someone i'm sure it happens every day but that was my version does anything spring to mind no you just get two bits of feedback at the kangas <laughs> you got a game and you got the ass <laughs> they're the only bits of feedback you got the kangas thanks dennis but, yeah. that was actually uh danny Laidley that that uh, gave me the the flick is that but, right yeah but i still apologize for the last i don't think i got a kick for the last 30 games well, it's he, funny you he, say he could that probably argue 40 games no <laughs> Because I, I put up a picture of a clip on social media of you actually were playing on my brother, and I sent it to you. Yeah. And that, it must have, this was, was that unfair. later on? Was no, that later was on a, in your career? This was, see, you always like to bring up the Port days. <laughs> you didn't beat the Kangaroos I beat know. Port every time for 10 yes, years. That's, that is correct. And that game you talk about was the first game after the Kerry incident when okay. he left the Kangaroos. Big so, off season. Well, it was, I think it was 10 days or seven. It was a week and a half out from the first game of 2002. And we went to Lee Colbert's place, actually, for a few days and tried to gather ourselves and whatnot. And your brother, I think he kicked two or three on me that day. Mm. And one, you sent me the video of, which I thought was rather unfair. I don't send you anything that's negative to you, (laughs) where Boomer kicks four or five on you or anything like that. And then I just get this little thing pop up. The first bit of communication between the two of us is you hanging it on me about your brother kicking goals. I said, mate. Give us a break. We beat, we beat you. We beat you after drinking for a week and a half in round one of two thousand two, and you still bring it up. Yeah, I was just concerned about your turning circle. That's all. I was concerned. I was, I was yeah, concerned yeah. for a long time. <laughs> it's going to be completely honest and give you some three sixty degree feedback. I was just a tad worried about the, the turning circle. Can I? T- there's a big story in America, huge, yep. and I want, I want to get people to get involved in this. Now you don't need to worry about this story per se, but Brian Flores is he's actually suing the NFL and he's suing I think the Giants. Um, for discrimination in, in terms of in America, that there's only one, there's 75% of the playing uh, stocks in America are black American, and there's only one black American coach. So everything's out of whack in terms of, and we, I think we've got similar issues mm. here with the indigenous um, players then becoming coaches. So it's a huge story in America because Bill Belichick, the legendary coach of the New England Patriots, actually sent Brian Flores a congratulatory message on getting the job at the Giants before he'd gone for the interview. He'd sent it to the wrong Brian. Oh, I know. He, he meant to send it to Brian Doble, and he sent it to Brian Flores. <sighs> Congratulations on getting the job. So this has become a major part of, of the act, of the lawsuit, um, that Bill had that information ahead of ahead of Brian getting any, any sort of um, mm. feedback, let alone uh, idea on where he sat. So... He just thought it was a, a box ticking exercise. So I just wonder for our listeners out there this morning, have you ever sent the message, a text message, a WhatsApp message, anything 
to the wrong person and how bad was it for you? Have you have you got anything where yeah. you, you sent the wrong person the wrong o, message? O four double three nine out of eleven sixteen. It's it's my worst nightmare. It didn't happen to me. I'm sure I am sure I've done it, but not not in a disastrous way. But my brother once sent me a message that was about a teammate <laughs> that was supposed to go to me oh. that went to said teammate. And that was I don't want to. I don't want to name names. I don't want to name well, names. You got to give us a little something. You I, give us a little bit more than that. A star player. Is he tall? Yeah, he's tall. He's a center forward. Top. He was. He was a center forward. Right. So what and did he say about Warren? The gone. It was. I believe it was something about it. I believe it was something about a, a trip, or you know, it was back in the day oh. where, where footy trips were allowed, or and, 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 may, and perhaps there was some angst about the the, the footy trip, or something like that. Might. My memory, it, it wasn't a disaster, but it was awkward. I did it with an email. We, I used to work for a hospitality firm, Eclipse Hospitality, and we at the end of, you know, grand final week, we'd try and get some talent in. And we tried to get Fev one year. And so he's sending emails to, we, we were based in Sydney, so sending emails to people in Sydney. And Alistair Lynch was looking after um, Fev at that stage. I think it was v- Velocity Sport, I think their, their management firm was called. And I sent an email. He said he put a figure in. I thought it was too high. We couldn't afford him. So I was just sending back an email to Sydney. Listen, this is too much. We're not going to pay for this bloke. You know, blah blah blah. Uh, this is we can spend that money a bit better. And you know, <laughs> and just my sign off was something like, I hope he gets arrested. Grand final week. Let's just move oh. on. You know. And I sent I sent it I sent it to Velocity Sports instead of the firm in Sydney. And I just remember Lynchy ringing me in tears, laughing. You, there's oh, no way you meant to send that to us. <laughs> Alistair was great oh, about Keith it. Keith seems to have done that himself was, a mischief. You've done himself a mischief, all right. That was embarrassing. Have you? Did you? Did Fev get a hold of it? Did it? Uh, he would have. It was, it was in the end. You just had to laugh. He, he knew mm. what I'd done, and mm. he, he couldn't talk your way out of that one. What's he charged for a couple of hours, Big Fev? Uh, I don't want to go through Fev's rates, but it was, it, it was, <laughs> it, was up there? It, it was, it was a. It would have been a good get for him if we had it signed off on it. Put it that way. Uh, get involved. 0433 98 11 16 is a temper text for a mattress like no other. When have you sent a text message to the wrong person or an email like David King? And uh, he sent that to, um, it should have not have gone to Fev, but it went to Fev. Get involved in that one. Um, Kingy, I'm a bit concerned about what's happening in Ballarat as well. Uh, there's a mullet ban at St. Patrick's College in Ballarat. <laughs> they've been told they've got a week to get their tails chopped or asked to be go home until the hairstyle has changed. Now, the mullet has become an extremely popular and acceptable haircut these days, but they've also included rat's tails, <laughs> mohawks, uh, obvious patterning mop tops, dreadlocks. Uh, they're not allowed as well. Did you have a mullet growing up? No, no, well, you I, didn't. I, no, I didn't. Even, I didn't have any style. Still don't have any style. <laughs> I've had no. the same haircut for forty years. There was. There's no style in a mullet, though. Oh, I, I well, the, what do you mean? The mullet's well, a style, isn't it? Well, the mu- reckon, yeah. you would have had one. Well, I did. I did actually. It's I, part I, of. It's part of the. Um, you have to get your first driver's license in South Australia. Has to have a mullet, doesn't it? Well, I was you get your fattest, L's? the fattest kid you've ever seen, and had the biggest, dirtiest, ugliest mullet you've ever seen. But it's. I mean, what's what's happening in Ballarat? They are they a bit precious down that in Ballarat. Part of the world? I wouldn't have thought that's the place to ban it. Maybe it's part of the condition. It's freezing in Ballarat during the winter. You need the mullet down the back of the neck just to keep things keep things rolling. Footballers with mullets, your favourite one. There's plenty of them. My personal favourite is the weed that ran around for the, the Adelaide weed. Crows in the 1990s. So for double three, nine out of 16. We're up and running. We're here for Kogan. Make the switch to great value credit cards and garage doors redefined. Callum Mills. Big boy Ben McAvoy is a big story regarding Justin Langer developments on that today and your calls. Get involved. Lines available on the other side of this. Dear, oh dear, you are getting excited. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4 dooroscomau Breakfast with Kane and Kingman. 
Good feedback on the temper text. As you can imagine, 0433 at 11 16. When did you text the wrong person? It's called a Riley O'Brien. Well, that is, <laughs> that is absolutely true. That's Melissa true. says, I did it last night. My daughter's coach forgot a one on one training session yesterday after driving nearly an hour. I sent an angry text to my friend. Turns out I sent it to the coach. Luckily, I didn't say anything rude or offensive. Oof. You escaped there, Melissa. Let's go to Barry, who's on the line. Baz, you sent an email to the wrong place. Oh, am I on, mate? Yeah, you are on loud and clear. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, it just came straight through. through. Yeah, listen, just the... uh, You've got to be very cautious when you... Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, this was... We were trying to do a deal with America. We are trying to sell on this little wire. And we were dealing with a whole lot of people. And uh, I was emailing all the guys in Australia... And then, uh, you know, when you try to get everybody on the email, you try to use old emails to get the whole group. Yes. And I inadvertently sent this saying that one of the marketing guys in, a, in the U.S. was a real nuff-nuff, N-U-F-F, N-U-F-F. And then, he, uh, and then uh, I get a response from him. He wasn't really sure what it was, but he was none too happy about it. Because in America, that, that's Australian slang. They don't know what a nuff-nuff mm. is, but he looked it up. So anyway, the deal went through, but oh, geez, it caused some stress, mate. Always <laughs> never send the previous emails. You've got to be real careful. Double, triple yeah. check. Yeah, it's not the first time that that has happened. Uh, hey, boys, looking forward to listening to you both. Took the day off work, and then I sent a message to my partner to come over for some fun, and I actually oh. sent the message to my boss. <laughs> he rang me straight oh, away. <laughs> And I don't know how, but I got out of it with some fast talking, even though my boss hated me. What, why is it that all nudes go to parents? <laughs> so I'm dealing with this guy. Your, your kids are sort of probably getting a... How well, old are you? Your, your old man probably puts him in the family yeah. chat. He's a, bit of a, he's a bit of a rooster back in the day, well, wasn't he? He did, hey? he did own a leather G-string there back you go. in the day. I mean, that's... My, an- my, my Text me if you've got a leather G string. That's more that, that's more fun than where we're going here. What was he hey? thinking? So I was, I've started watching this. I've, I've been all I've been on to some good TV shows, Kingy. In the in the break, I've had some time up my what hands. I watched uh, well on Disney Plus. I've got every streaming service under the sun. It's a, it's a real <laughs> bane of my existence at home um, with which ones to have and which not to, and the arguments with the children. This is on Disney Plus. Pam and Tommy. It. Oh. Uh, Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee. I've just started it. First episode was great. Second one's a bit slow, but he loved a leather G-string, did Tommy Lee. Just cruise, just cruises around the house in a leather G-string. So anyway, if you've got it, flaunt it. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm concerned about your your situation already. <laughs> I told you we're very different people. There's no way in the world I'd watch that. You wouldn't watch Pam and Tommy? No. Oh, I've seen a bit of Pam and Tommy, but I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't watch <laughs> You wouldn't watch a TV series about them, uh, okay? No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't All right. think so. Did I you... mean, you're in this. You're in the episode two, and you think it's going a bit slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the first one was great. Second, if you if you've watched it, if you've had a look at it, let us know. So, what what are you? Did you watch it? Any anything? Yeah. I, I headed to the movies a couple of times. I, you oh. probably headed to the pub. No. You, uh, well, I, well, I would have, yeah, but uh, no, I've, I've done the standards, you know, the Ozarks, mm. all those. Yep. Yeah, so I'm sort of back up to date with everything, billions, those sorts of things. Is it? Mm. There's a, there's a, um, is it? There's quite a few around them. Oh, it's a bit slow, isn't it? The Netflix and and uh, they haven't got back rolling after COVID, obviously, but mm. they're starting to come through now, which is good. All right. Well, you can also interact with us on the app as well. So if you look at the SEN app, we're going to take a screenshot of the SEN audience. We want you to have your say and vote. It's a new interactive way to get involved with us. So jump on the SEN app. We've got a question up there this morning. Which team is most likely to miss the finals in 2022? Miss the finals. To miss the finals. And I'm going to get you to answer this, Kingy. All right, who have you got? Geelong, Carlton, St Kilda, or Eston, and who's Jeez. most likely out of that four to miss? Jeez, we've started with a positive there, haven't we? Who's yeah, like, well, who are we upsetting well, first well, up? Well, it means three have made it. So that, <laughs> it depends which well, way you look at it. All four might miss. I just had Geelong. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I love our man. Uh, Johnny, uh, gee, that's a tough question. Mm. I've, I've still got enormous faith in the leadership of Geelong. I, I don't have Geelong missing, and I know that I think I've probably put them out of the eight over the last couple of years. Oh but they're just they just continue to do it. So until they actually fail, 
I'm not. I'm giving up on preempting the demise of the cats. Well, you've got to pick one. We're not sitting on the fence. So Geelong um, are in. I still don't really trust Carlton, and I love the list. And Kilda, okay. I don't trust either. The Bombers are flying. The Bombers are in. They'll, they'll make it right. for sure. They're a lock. So Carlton or St Kilda? Saints for me. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that one. But anyway, check it out. It's a, a good way. They, the, the tech gurus here are, are doing pretty solid things. So have your vote. We'll give you the updated results a bit later on. We are here for Kogan. Make the switch to great value credit cards and garage doors. Redefine 4 dorsauu Big story out of the Winter Olympics, Kingy, that you wanted to touch on with one of the world's biggest stars who I'd never heard of until you alerted my attention to wow. it. Tell us about Aileen Gu. Eileen, we're doing Eileen. some work on. Uh, you, you've lost it with names this week. We're doing it. We're doing some work together, and I thought I'll just sort of see some like types, you know, around the world. <laughs> She's decided to represent China instead of America in the. Uh, she made that decision years ago when she was fifteen. Cool. She's a supermodel. She's just the the, um, the absolute darling in, in China at the moment. They call her the I think the Snow Princess. They call her. She's she's going to. You know, win medals in, in this uh, this uh, Winter Olympics. There's no doubt about that. So I'll just have a look through. So she signs, every deal she signs is approximately $2.5 million. And they list them there. And there's about 20 deals she's got signed. So financially, she's absolutely nailed it. Her mum's from China. Uh, so she's got some heritage. So she had a choice to make. And it just made me think of yourself, you know, like you could have got out of Adelaide. You could have come come to the big smoke oh, here, over here in Melbourne here, and made it. You know, just absolutely nailed it. Here we go. But you decide to stay. Which, well, you know, brings there a, was a lot of different discussions. Well, really. there was a petition. They, they, they wouldn't let me petition. in. <laughs> so the South Locked Australians, the, don't, the South Australians don't want me. The Victorians <laughs> don't want me. So I just, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm actually stuck. Anyway, well, I didn't Aileen think there was so Duke. much money in in, in skiing. It, it, well, I think it's more. It? I think it's more the uh, the modelling that she does, having a, having a look at some of her social media. Welcome back to the Kane and Kingy show, but Kane's dropped out, so we're going to rebrand it as the Kingy and Kane show right now. Uh, we're going, we're going again. So <laughs> we've lost. Oh no, there he is. He's back, oh, Cornsy. Don't, 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 we don't lost you. you. Try and, don't you try and get rid of me before I've been here half an hour, and you're trying to get rid of me. <laughs> Half well, an hour. Fix your internet over there, can you? Th- 31 minutes and you've sacked I me. I would have done a lot earlier than that if it was my <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you heard, but I heard three sets of news. I heard an ad break, so apologies for that slight technical difficulty. You might have been all fine depending where you're listening to us this morning. But, Kingy, there's plenty of sport around, so it's time for some more of that for the tough and rugged Nissan Navara. The perfect addition to your business fleet. Now, the Aussies have retained the women's ashes, claiming the trophy for the fourth straight time with a 27-run victory in the first of three one-day internationals to take an unassailable eight four-points lead with one T20 victory, followed by the two washouts, a drawn test, and then they won yesterday. Beth Mooney, Darcy Brown were the best for the Southern Stars, with Mooney scoring 73 off 91. Uh, But Brown, she was the star. She bowls quick, four for 34 in the fourth ODI. Pretty impressive stuff from the girls. I saw that. I watched a bit of that. I obviously watched the test. The test was fantastic finish. Mm. And, and, and again, yesterday, the, England were in a great position in both games. Oh, they really would be disappointed with how they they finished off both of those uh, occasions. The big cricket story at the moment, Paddy Cummins has repeatedly sidestepped uh, offering support for embattled coach Justin Langer during an extraordinary press conference yesterday. To the, to the gathered press, and he was asked repeatedly mm. uh, about the situation. He said the speculation was not healthy, and he didn't want to add by giving any public uh, opinion that could hold. Uh, so he didn't want to sway any public opinion. Let's have a listen to what Paddy said. You know, it lays in Cricket Australia's hands. It's, uh, yeah, Jail's, um, you know, been doing a fantastic job. He's been there for four years. Um, I think his yeah, contract's obviously up soon, so they're just going through a, you know, evaluation process at the moment. Um, which I think is you know, fair, the right thing to do. Uh, we all have get evaluated all the time as cricketers. It's part of a high-performance environment. So, yeah, that process is happening. And, um, yeah, hopefully there's a decision soon made by Cricket Australia, but we'll sit back and wait. We'll get your view on this, Kingy, after 7 o'clock. It's a big issue of the day and where it lands. And also Pat Cummins coming up with Sam Edmund on the captain's run a little bit later on this morning. So stick around for that chat. Aerial skier Laura Peel and figure skater Brendan Kerry both 
as at their third Winter Games will be the flag bearers for the Australian Winter Olympic team for tonight's opening ceremony. It's the first time a Winter Olympics team has had two flag bearers and follows the Tokyo Summer Olympics where Paddy Mills and Kate Campbell shared that honour. In pre-opening ceremony action, Jakari Anthony and Brittany Cox have gone straight through to the Women's Moguls final after strong performances in qualifying over. I haven't seen much of it yet. Have you seen no. much of it? No, I've been meaning to. Cause I had, I had uh, Hamish McLaughlin on and I had Jason Richardson yesterday from Beijing. I was just fall asleep too early, unfortunately. <laughs> I thought you were going to say fall asleep talking to them. No, definitely not. <laughs> That's how I'm going. Anyway, after a 6-5 losses to the United States and China, Australia have gone down 8-2. They got smashed by the Czech Republic in the curling last night. Uh, Tali Gill and Dean Hewitt were no match for the fellow games debutantes. I'm not going to um, try and pronounce the, go the on, have a go. Have a go. athletes' names. Zuzana Pavolo. Very Pavola, yeah, very good. Mm, something like that. And Thomas Paul. Our record stands at 0-3 on three for today's round robin games against Sweden. We don't even have an a rink, a curling rink in the country. So it's no real surprise. It's just a good effort to be there. Can't believe we're representing, but that's uh, good luck to them. Fremantle yeah. midfielder Cara Bowers, and I want to talk about this later on, yep. had her two-week suspension upheld after contesting her rough conduct charge at Thursday night's AFL uh, Appeals Tribunal. Bowers was charged with engaging in rough conduct in the fourth quarter incident involving Bulldogs Kirsty Lamb. We'll talk about that later on, Kane, because it was a long way off the ball. Yeah, get the feeling you're going to come off the long run with that one. Port Adelaide's hopeful Charlie Dixon is going to be fit for round one to spot the star forward undergoing ankle surgery this week. Dixon tore ligaments in his left knee, left ankle that is, after landing awkwardly during a marking contest at training in January. Kingy, some good news out of North. Great news. Uh, young gun Taron Thomas, or Taron Thomas I should say, will remain at Arden Street for at least another two years, the end of 2024 after signing an extension. Great news. they got a Great young midfield building, and you just need those signatures. Lock them away long term. Yeah, I did like the social media release as well. Quite clever with the use of a, a rat test, but it was positive for a two-year contract rather than positive for the coronavirus. Good staff in the A-League. The Newcastle Jets have scored their second win the season, 2-1 over Brisbane Raw. To move the Jets to ninth place on the A-League ladder and ahead of the Raw on goal difference. Real scare yesterday. Champion jockey Damien Oliver was taken to hospital for precautionary scans after incident at Warrnambool. Uh, he very rarely goes down there, but he was mm. had four rides yesterday. And, and after his horse got caught in the barriers in the last, it actually sat down, reared up. Uh, he's been checked for neck injuries. So he's a real, real worry. We can't wait to get more information on this one. Just hoping he's okay. The Victorian Jockeys Association confirmed Oliver was heading back to hospital after having that x-ray on his neck, as we said. So awaiting further news there. But good luck to Damien. Yeah, we wish him all the best. And as any information comes to hand this morning, we'll bring that to you live. That was your sport for the tough and rugged Nissan Navara, the perfect addition to your business fleet. Up next, he's demanded control of the Imar <laughs> Trades Insurance. I love that. This I love was non negotiable. David King Mate. says, in the contract, I control the quiz. I'm a man of the people with the quiz. 1 300 736 736. Line up and play it next. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4ddoors.com.au. Breakfast with Kane and King. The SEN Breakfast Quiz for IMAR Tradies Insurance. Get an instant quote and pay the premium at imar.com.au or call 13 IMAR. That's IMAR. Absolutely loaded for prizes for the first day of Kane and Kingy. A $50 driving range voucher for Yarrow Bend. Play, practice, enjoy. Yarrow Bend Golf is on Melbourne's doorstep. A double pass to the Valley Summer Festival tonight. Come and join the fun at the Valley Summer Festival. Uh, that's from the 29th to the 25th of Feb. Get your tickets at thevalley.com.au. And a double pass to Melbourne City versus Perth Glory. That'll be big. 6.45 this Sunday night at Amy Park. Join the champions this season. Tickets at Ticketek. He's demanded it. Yep. So I'm going to sit back. I'm going to drink my coffee. I'm going to listen along. Away you go, David King. Well, I like to find out just to get just a, a, a check of how many times these callers have won this quiz before because I do think these names pop up quite regularly. Andy mm. from Keelor Park. You there, Andy? Morning, King. How are you, mate? Going well. You're a, you're a 10-time winner, I see. Uh, just to just <laughs> give you a heads up, it's the captain's quiz today, okay? okay. Question one. Which cricketer has captained the most amount of test matches for Australia? 
Ricky Ponting. Andy, unfortunately, is not going to rack up number 11. Pete from Alton. Pete, you've won it a few times, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Don't give away too much, Good Pete. Good honesty, Pete. Which cricketer is it that has captained the Aussies for the most test matches? What, ever? Or... Yes. Donald Bradman? They played many tests back then, did they? That was a disastrous yeah. answer, Pete. Yeah, Pete. Send back a couple of those trophies, can yeah. you? Daniel Woolert. Daniel, good morning. Who is good morning, the, King. Who's the captain I'll we're talking a, about? I'll take a stab at um, Steve Wall. This is getting some wickets, isn't it? This is getting some wickets. It wasn't a hard one either. Well, it's, it's, Steve's so. a good guess. Ricky's a, a solid guess, but there's an obvious answer. Aaron and Berwick, you there, Aaron? No, good morning, King Ian. Who is um, it? Kane, how are you going? Who's captain the Aussies it, uh, the most in Test cricket? Is it AB? Very good, very good. He's on the road this morning, Aaron. He's ready to go. Question two. Ben McAvoy, who joins us later in the show, was announced yesterday as the Hawthorne captain for 2022. Who was the previous Hawks skipper? Was it uh, Sicily? No, oh, it's a good, good quiz today. Started strong. Nate set this up perfectly. Mick. Clyde North. Now, Mick's a, Mick's a multiple winner of this. Gee, Mick. Good morning. Are you joking? Oh, oh, I know. You've just got trophy after trophy. Mick, who was the <laughs> captain before Ben McAvoy at the Hawks? Ben Stratton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well saying him well today. Question three. Who was this season's captain of the BBL champions, the Perth Scorchers? Who was it? Who was the captain of the Perth Scorchers this year? Ashton Kerner. Very good, Ooh, very give you that. good. A little, little hiccup there, but he got through it. it. This is your big chance, Mick, big chance. Brianna Davey was struck down with an ACL injury in round one of the AFLW season this year. She's the co-captain of which football club? Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> is it Collingwood? Yes. <laughs> well done, Mick. This is it. This is to, you don't think you've won very regularly. I tend to disagree with that. Question five. What NBA organisation has captain of the Boomers, Paddy Mills, played the most games for? What NBA organisation has captain of the Boomers, Paddy Mills, played the most games for? I don't even watch basketball, mate. Uh, <laughs> I'll take a stab. Yeah. Uh, what... Uh, uh, I wouldn't have a clue. Some team from California, what, the LA, whatever whatever they call themselves? Mick, Not so the close. Lakers. Mick, so close. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how close you were, Mick. Give us a call again tomorrow. <laughs> the easiest question, too. So close. Sean Gisborne, you've walked into an absolute soda. Sean, who, who is it? Uh, the San Antonio Spurs. Yes, well done. Well, um, one and done well for Sean. He won a whole host of prizes that Kane I went through before. <laughs> That's a bit of fun, Kane. Sean just won his 10th $50 driving, driving range voucher to Yarra. He'll own the joint Golf. soon. Uh, that was the SEN Breakfast Quiz for IMAR Traders Insurance. Right now at IMAR, buy Traders Insurance online and save IMAR.com.au. Kingy, big story this morning, which we might touch on after 7 o'clock. Caroline Wilson and Sam McClure have apologised and also, and, and Nine Papers as well, have apologised for some of their coverage in relation to Adelaide's camp and um, the organisation Collective Mind. So Nine is now going to retract 13 publications, including two video interviews published between 2018 and 2021, uh, including uh, some from Caroline Wilson and Sam McClure, um, feature stories on TV interviews in July. Um, the runners, sorry, the facilitators of the camp and the owners of the company, Mr. Wolf and Mr. Letty, said the apologies from the media company and the journalists came as a welcome yet overdue acknowledgement of the truth of the matter. Large media organisations and journalists don't apologise easily, so this is clearly a significant victory for our personal reputations, our brand and our business. Oof. Not a story you read every day, is it? Wow, yeah. that, that's, uh, that's big, isn't it? 13 stories they're apologising for. Yeah, so the, the, you can you can read it in the Herald Sun, and it's um, doing the the media rounds this morning. There's a there's a lengthy apology from Channel Nine, and also um, Caroline, and also Sam McClure. Nine and the Age are going to publish statements on page three of the Sunday Age on February the sixth, and on Nine's Wide World of Sports website, The Age, on Monday, February the seventh, for a week, apologising and expressing regret if they caused Mr. Wolf and Mr. Letty any hurt or offence. 
Um, mm. So that, that, that's a big. Now there would be elements that the the two journalists absolutely would would stand by, and and clearly they are well researched search journalists who have spoken to players who are there, and the version that they have published and written about is is the version that they thought was the truth. What they've apologised is for is causing hurt and and harm to the business, which is understandable when you write negative stories like that. But it's somewhat of an admission, perhaps that maybe it. Um, you know, there's some uh, not inaccuracies, but some differences of you know opinion on on what no, went not, down on it that. It won't camp be and, opinion. It won't be opinion. Be more than that. I mean, you very rarely see a retraction of this size, particularly from Carolyn Wilson and Sam McClure. That that mm. level of of journalists. No, there's more than opinion on this one. They've, they've clearly got some information wrong there, and, and they've had to retract. And they've had to pay for the legal costs as well. Sure. You can have your say on that. one three hundred seven three six seven three six. 736 Journalists that cover stories aren't the most popular at times, so there'll be a lot of people vindicated with that. And, and perhaps, you know, finally after these apologies are released, we can sort of move on from a story that dominated for a long, long time. Um, so, yeah, let us know your thoughts on that one. 0433 98 11 16. It's Kane and Kingy coming to you. We're going into Melbourne, Adelaide, Western Australia, Tassie, the top end, Sunraysia, Bunbury, Geelong, Bendigo, Ballarat, and all around the country on the SEN app. Uh, check out the SEN app. We've got a tricky poll up as well on the SEN app that you can vote on which team is most likely to miss the finals this year. Geelong, Carlton, St Kilda, and Essendon. Give us your thoughts. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4ddoors.com.au. Breakfast with Kane and King. Yeah, good response to Fireball as well. I wasn't sure about it. David King's suggestion, you've absolutely nailed it from the feedback uh, I've been receiving on the text line, uh, Kingy, and also on my personal phone. So well done to, with to that To say one. you weren't a fan of it is an understatement. I, you didn't even give me any feedback <laughs> no, at all. I, I Not felt, one thing. I, I felt so bad. I didn't even respond I to know. your text message when I, you sent it through. I can tell there's... there's, there's I'm just I'm just not even on the communication chart with you. That's what, no, no. we'll have to build this. We we'll have to. Build we will. This. We're yeah. building. Um, strong response on the text line to this story about Caroline Wilson and Sam McClure um, uh, and the nine papers apologising to collective minds. Kane, that was an awful defence of two people that fabricated stories, and you called it opinions. Opinions are not facts. Well done for Kingy for pulling him up. Says Craig. My only concern is that. We don't want to deter journalists from doing a really difficult job. It's getting harder and harder to do that job for the fear of being sued. Now, they have apologized for bringing hurt to collective minds and to damaging their reputations. They haven't apologized for everything that was in the article. So clearly they're admitting some fault there and and perhaps over-exaggerating how significant the story was. But I hope journalism is still a thing, if you know what I mean, King. Well, the key quote in the apology is, the age acknowledges that the camp was run in good faith with the players' interests front of mind. If the article was read to suggest otherwise, the age withdraws that suggestion. Mm. So it's not necessarily saying versions of events were wrong or questioning what they actually reported. It's just the slant to the player. So it's a tricky one. It's an awkward one. Um, it was a big story at the time and it'll continue to be a big story. It cost the Crows it cost the Crows a lot of players, a lot of good faith with their players, and it, 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 it shook a football club. So there's mm. a lot of truth to the story. Let's not let's not go too hard at uh, Caro and and Sam for that, but they are apologizing. Uh, we'll take your calls on that after seven o'clock. Just quickly the Friday form panel, ten thirty today on SEN track. Friday night's gonna see the running of the Great Southern Star Heats, uh, with the first three across the line in each. Um, it makes a 10-horse final later in the evening. The Group 1 Great Southern Star final is worth $300,000 oh. and is Australia's premier event for trotters. Attention then turns to Saturday night when the carnival concludes with a blockbuster meeting at Melton. You, that, that's one suburb you could actually pronounce correctly. Right? <laughs> the Group 1 $500,000 AG Hunter Cup has been won by the greats of harness racing and shapes to be a cracking race. This season, past winners King of Swing and Lockin, Lockin Var Art will do battle, along with the inform Spirit of St. Louis coming off the Bendigo, Shepparton and Ballarat Cup wins. That's form. That's form. There you go. Triple Eight and the Amazing Dream. And if Amazing Dream wins, it will be a special result for Nathan Purden, who lost his legendary grandfather, Roy, on Thursday.
Best tip for Good Fridays, luck. race four, number one. I'm ready. Best value, race five, number three. For harness racing news, tips and analysis, catch the Friday form panel from 10.30 on SEN Track. We want to get you involved after seven o'clock. You can have your say on Sam McClure, Channel 9 and Caroline Wilson issuing apology to collective minds. We want to talk some footy after seven o'clock as well. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4ddoors.com.au. Breakfast with Kane and King. Yeah, it's a very good morning to you. Busy first hour, first day of Kane and Kingy. Thank you for joining in and following along with us and joining the conversation and building from here. Our McCafe menu is rather large today, a captain's day on Kane and Kingy. So New Swans co-captain, he's one of three. Callum Mills is going to join us after 8 o'clock. And just before Ben McAvoy, Hawks fans, he's going to captain your club for the second year in a row. Your calls, your texts. We're going into Melbourne and Adelaide. We're in a WA with Mark McGowan listening along on the SEN app. Tasmania, Top End, Sunraysia, Bunbury, Geelong, Bendigo, Ballarat, and all around the country. You can also get involved on the SEN app as well. We've got a poll up there this morning. Which team is most likely to miss the AFL finals? Geelong, Carlton, St Kilda, and Essendon. Kingy and myself both think St Kilda most likely. We'll update you on those results very, very shortly. Kingy, good morning. Well, Kane, I just want to have a chat to you about the off-season. It's always full of intrigue as to where the game's going to go. And Brad Scott came into the new role and replaced Steve Hocking in November. He made some interesting comments. I think we should hear those comments first, and then we'll just get stuck into the changes and what's been addressed immediately. Hopefully, we'll do our best to form a really clear position by the end of January so that uh, clubs, coaches, players, umpires uh, have as much clarity as possible on how we're going to adjudicate those decisions in 2022. Our job is to make sure that, that Michael Christian as the match review officer is really clear on what our guidelines say. Regardless of the direction we go, I, I think the key is that everyone knows the ground rules at the start of the year. Um, we obviously reserve the right to, to tweak things because player safety is always going to come first. But we'd ideally like to flag that November, December, January rather than in season. So that was Brad back in November. So six weeks later, they made three significant changes. Okay, they, they've, they've come up with a new time-wasting rule. So if you don't give the ball back straight away or mm-hmm. hover over the ball, that'll be a 50-metre penalty. Nothing upsets fans like 50-metre penalties. So you wait till that starts mm. in round one, if not the pre-season competition. They're going to be less lenient on holding the ball you wait till there's free kick goals, defensive 50 stoppages in close games. Again, if it's not the 50-metre penalty, it's the free kick goal. But I think the crackdown on players ducking their head or not disposing of the ball quickly is a significant change. That that the prior opportunity grey area is a huge discussion point. So park that one for the moment. But he did talk about head knocks. And I think we've seen the first sample with the Kiara Bowers situation with the Fremantle Dockers on the weekend, she bumped um, Kirsty Lamb off the ball, was, was 40 metres off the ball. Now, she's saying she was leading and she made contact. She, she took her to the ground. She was off the – she had to leave the field for a few moments. Sure, she came back on to finish the game for the Western Bulldogs. In a close game, it's a big issue. So mm. she was reported for rough, uh, rough play, uh, unduly rough play, and – under the new guidelines, the new stricter interpretation, I just want to show she was given two weeks um, by the match, match review officer and then she challenged that as she did last year. She challenged the sling tackle last year and got one week down to $400 fine and went on to win the best and fairest in the competition. So she challenged this time around again and she was unsuccessful. So the two weeks was upheld. So I'm left wondering and I'd like the AFL to give us an explanation Two weeks in a 10-week season for in the women's comp, does that mean that in the men's competition that that will be akin to a four-week suspension given that it's a 22-week season? And can you link the two competitions? You're right in doing that. Um, I had a look at it. The vision was hard, wasn't it? I mean, you had the behind-the-goals vision and it was – I didn't think it was conclusive. 
Was it? Did you? Oh. Were you? Were you? Of, it was, it, well, if, I did. It yeah. was. It, it was miles off the ball. And Fifty meters, sixty meters off the ball. But you couldn't. I couldn't actually see when contact was made. So you, once again, you're relying on a medical evidence and and these types of things. Now, this is the issue. That I think that you've been you've driven this conversation harder than anyone. You think it's a bigger issue in the game than what I do. Are we going to be having these debates about David McKay and, and the accidental head? So I'm not talking about the ones today, you know, Cowra Bowers off the ball, deliberately head hike, yeah, cop you yeah. two weeks. If that's four in the eight, I don't, I don't really have an issue with that. My concern is, are we going to lose the fabric of the game if we start to penalise players, a la David McKay, for football accidental hits when their sole focus is on the footy? But you don't, you've, you don't have a lot of sympathy for that. No, I don't. I, I don't. The David McKay incident is, is a classic absolutely on the line. An, an inch to the left of the line, you're saying you get weeks. An, an inch to the right of the line, you're saying that's part of our game. But I've got no issue with that. But if we can correct a percentage of these sorts of knocks, so this is where we disagree. I think if you can, if you can cease 50% of this head trauma, it's a huge win. And it might cost some individual players some suspensions this season. And some of them might be unfair. But you've got to change behaviour. And that'll seep in. If you take games off players and football clubs, they change behaviour. If you find them or, or whack them with a wet lettuce leaf, nothing changes. So, but do we lose the fabric, though? You won't lose the fabric. You won't lose the fabric. But how far does it go? And, and, and you, you laugh at me when I say, you know, players go out for a spoil with their knee and it collects someone. You, that's you, part of the game. That, I'm not talking but, about but, that at all. But so is, so is a 50-50 ball when you, your sole focus is winning the ball. Yep, you turn the body to protect yourself. You make contact with the opposition in the head. He goes down, he's concussed. And players like, oh, I didn't. I, that's the fabric of the game as well. Yeah, and how many of them would we have a year? Oh, two or three, four? Well, if, if, if you get two or three or four instances for the year that you've got to change for the sake of the safety of the player, is it a great loss? Mm. Well, I saw, I saw a couple of – it was one instance. I wish I could remember both players. It was definitely Patrick Cripps and there was another player take a half step. Yeah. And, and you would say that's the result we want. I would say – Patrick Cripps is one of the toughest players I've ever seen. And if the ball's there, I've never seen him take a backward step. But he's second-guessing himself, playing the hardest game in the world to play with so many thoughts going through his head, where it used to just be Paul Kelly sees the ball, he goes and wins it. Mark Rusciuto sees the ball, he goes and wins it. Now Patrick Cripps has got to go, am I allowed to go win the ball, turn my body, am I going to hit the opposition high? What's my technique like? What's his technique like? Is he going to slow down? We're making it really difficult for the players is is my concern. In the short term. I concede in the short term you are. But if you're going to change behaviour, that there is there is a a period of grey area in anything you do. So it, the bigger win is 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 preventing head trauma rather than trying to correct it post. I mean, this is – everyone says, oh, you're just doing this because of the cost to the AFL down the track. I'm not doing it for that at all. Talk to players – that we, we should do this. In the next couple of Fridays, we should get on a player that has had, had his life changed at 25 years of age. Mm. So he's got to live 70 years uh, of, of his life with migraines, the inability to, to converse properly, the, 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 no thirst for life, no energy to enjoy. There's no enjoyment in these people's lives. The, the mm. head trauma is a serious discussion. I, I read a story about Roy Simmons, who's an NRL great. Now, NRL is a different code, and they've got their own issues. But it's still about head trauma, and it's still about concussion. Brain injury is one thing we just stepped straight through. Oh, you've got to be tough in this game. And, and you speak from that, that, yeah, that gospel, I, and I, what, don't, I, don't lo- I, don't think no, that's, I don't think that's the modern era. I'm not denying the issue. And when you, when you speak like that and when you speak, to, it's, it's horrific, Kingy. Uh, but there, there, what are there you going to do about it then? Well, but there is an inherent risk, and we have made the game – really safe. Like I think the, the AFL has made it pretty, it was a lot safer than when you played and, and it's a lot, lot safer than when others played in the seventies. I, I think they're doing the best that they can, but you can't lose what makes the game great. And uh, there, there's how far do you cut? Like, are you, you, see, you, why, you why can't, can't name, you? You can't name to me the incident. You, it's 
it didn't stand out that much to you for you to say it was Patrick Cripps and it was so and so mm. and it was this instance. Mm. So it doesn't really stand out. But, but if the they player... go further, if they go further and we're starting to rub players out for four weeks for an accidental contest, absolutely it'll stand out when we've got players taking backward steps. I, or... I don't think they'll get four weeks the, for, an, for, the... for a split, a, a, a hair's breadth. They may, the, they may get a week. Yeah. The most dangerous thing you can do at a footy field is go for a spectacular mark. That's my opinion. And uh, so if you, I think it's a bit hypocritical to – I'm not changing to, that to, 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 but But I think it's hypocritical not to because that's the most dangerous thing you can do. What, why is it okay for someone to get concussed with a knee to the jaw, but it's not okay for someone to get concussed with a 50-50 bump you, on the you ball? You know, and, and, and conveniently people who argue like you do this side of the coin – conveniently forget there are many ways to win the football. You can take the body first before taking the football. In a marking contest, it, 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 the sole focus when your knee is up is at the point of the ball arriving to, to solely the mark the ball. You can, keep your legs, you can keep your legs well, straight. Not, not, well, you'd have to talk to greater aerialists than me, but I, know, I didn't get off the ground. But um, I think that's part of marking technique. Okay, there's a technique of winning a, a spilt ball, a 50-50 ball. If I take your body before taking the ball, that's a way of winning the ball. We've got to change that. We've got to protect mm. the player who's coming. Protect. What, what protection did Kirsty Lamb have in the Kiara Bowers incident? Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not so we necessarily need to protect arguing. that player. I'm not arguing Andrew Gaff or Tom Jonas for those who come through with a ray or a behind the ball or or even a you know a, a Lance Franklin swinging elbow. I'm not arguing that one. I'm arguing are we going to have players second guessing attacking the footy and are we going to lose some of the fabric of the game? And secondly, is it there an inherent risk with playing footy that unfortunately there is in a lot of jobs that you sign up for, you get paid well, and unfortunately no, it's, not about money. A... it's not about money. Though. I think you conflict the argument when you do that. Okay. You, you, well, can, you can't pay someone enough to have 70 years with brain injury of their life to remain after football. You can't pay them enough. No, I know, but, but some jobs with risk, you're paid more. Like Miners are paid more because of the risk, the inherent risk that there is. So I think you factor it in a little bit. And also the players know the risk that they're taking when they go out there. one three hundred seven three six seven three six. Would love your thoughts on that, uh, including Ryan, who's given us a call, wants to join in this morning. What's your view, Ryan? G'day, Ryan. Yes. Get back to uh, you. Yeah, yeah, boys. Just wanted to call oh, up man. and uh, say that um, I think for hardcore footy fans like myself, the majority of people probably wouldn't have a problem with the AFL cracking down unless they change the uh, Brownlow um, categorization, whatever it is. So, you know, if you get done for a week like that, You've got to change it because then it just compromises it way too much. I think then the best player's not winning. So, what are your thoughts on that? Good on you, Ryan. Yeah, well, if it, yeah. fairest and best, I don't, it's not one that is top of mind for me, but if they're going to be really ticky touchwood and, and rub people out for minor incidents, then you may look at it. Uh, Johnny, what's your thoughts, bud? Uh, you've got me. Sorry, have you, Kane? Yeah, mate. Morning, John. Sorry, Sorry Kingy and Kane. Um, I agree with you, Cornsey. Uh, sorry, Kingy. Um, if you change the behaviour of the player, you're actually effectively changing the fibre of the game. Um, the incident I want to bring to attention was a lot of people reckon that uh, Trent Cotchin should have been... should have been uh, He should have got weeks prior to a final. Um, mm. I saw him dive headfirst for the ball and Shield sort of went in half-hearted. He, if he hadn't gone in... If he had gone in with the same intensity, I reckon they would have met at the same pace. Um, I was always told, I was only a little bloke, I was always told if you just scout around the packs half-hearted or you don't go in for the ball hard, you're going to get hurt. And I think it's going to change the fibre of our game. And You're going to get players, as Cordy said, like Matthew, uh, like Cripps, he don't know what to do. And a lot of players don't know whether to go for the ball, whether not go for the ball. And if it's an incident where two players are going hard for the ball and there is a concussion, God, don't ruin our game and take it out of the game because, as Cordy just said a minute ago, they sign up to play footy. They sign up, they know it's a tough game and they know no one wants anyone to have a 70-year seven, bloody history of illness or whatever you said, Kingy. But 
uh, it, don't change our game because it's changed to nothing. It is a tough game, and you sign up for it. And yeah, a lot well, of Johnny, thanks for your thoughts, mate. I agree you sign up for it, John, but I think you've got to evolve with the game. I mean, we're full professional athletes now. They're, they're, they are missiles, these guys. They're six foot three, all of them. The midfielders now are bigger than they've ever been. They, ca- they come at the player with the ball at such speed that contact now is greater and more regular than what contact has been for the previous 30 years. So the game has evolved. It was a one-on-one game 20 years ago. And the only person you had to worry about was the guy next to you. Now, mm. they come from everywhere and immediately. So I think you've got to evolve with the game. And you've still got to create a safe workspace. I mean, you just can't have – we can't have 20 concussions a year, 30 concussions a year, if we can save 10 of them, if we can save eight of them. Joining the conversation on this one, Simon's in Brighton. Well said, Kingy. Ex-players like Kane get excited when they see someone being knocked unconscious. Gary Lyon is the same. It needs to be stamped out. I don't get excited at all um, in my defence. It's it's an interesting debate on where the game co- goes to from here. 100% spot on, Kingy, but I'll ask you a question. If the AFL are fair dinkum about head-high contact, how long for the players responsible for the duty of care for their teammates? And that's the other area that... Perhaps is a topic for another day. Yeah. What about an accident with your own teammates? We're up and running this morning. Callum Mills is going to join us. I want to knock out a couple well, of teammates. You would have had a couple yeah, of teammates. Want to knock just, out? Just, just a couple. Ben McAvoy. Tom Morris has got some developments in relation to the big story Ooh. with Justin Langer. That was our conversation starter for Pope's Drip Ease, which makes drip irrigation a breeze. It's 19 minutes after seven. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4ddoors.com.au. Breakfast with Kane and King. Yeah, it's our conversation starter, that is, for Pope's Drip Ease, which makes drip irrigation a breeze 25 minutes after 7 o'clock. one 736 736 if you want to get involved. Um, a lot of you texting through in relation to the head high knocks. Uh, I'm coming from one way, concerned about the fabric of the game. Kingy says um, we've got to make a statement and stamp it out in terms of the safety of the players. Mate, Brad Shepard would be a good chat, wouldn't he, Kingy? Be- he would, yeah. So we'll have a look at that. We'll, we'll try and um, speak to Brad. I know, I know Adelaide as well. A lot of a couple of Crows fans texting through. They've got three players currently in concussion protocol as well, including their next captain Tom Duda, who's really concerned about it. So I, I'm, not deni- I'm not denying it's an issue. Yeah, no, it's an issue because J- Justin Clark, I think his name is a guy that was on the Brisbane Lions list, a seriously intelligent guy doing some high level um, university degrees. Got to his car one day, sat in the car, and just couldn't actually recall where to drive mm. where, where is the univ- where am I actually going he had to sit there he, he, he was just lost and that, that was the point in time where he said this is this is a greater problem than I believed it to be so uh, Scott Stevens is another one an old teammate of the Adelaide Crows there but uh, look yeah uh, it's a huge issue we haven't got the answer here this morning it's a, it's a watch to see what the levels of suspension are going to be and Kiara Bowers getting two weeks is a good talking point you know what I reckon is going to be a big issue as well as we move on to some other issues relating to the game? I think this cost of living debate in Sydney is going to be a story this year. I had Tom Harley on SEN uh, yesterday morning, the CEO of the Sydney Swans, and I asked him about it. It's clearly been a hot topic over the past couple of years or whenever the whenever cola was abolished back in 2016, but it is extremely expensive. At the same time, it's an extremely, um, extremely beautiful um, and prosperous place to live as well, but Getting your foot into the property door is becoming more and more challenging. Um, uh, look, as far as as far as reinstatement of cost of living, I won't even go there. And um, you know, I think it's incumbent on us as a club to to really maximise those opportunities, which are which are which are really here in Sydney when you play your football up here. Whilst clearly acknowledging that getting into the, the housing market is a challenge. So look, we, we, we worked out as far as our salary cap goes, we'll exhaust every cent that we've possibly got. And in a lot of instances, that's to, to be competitive uh, in housing. So, um, you know, we, 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 we're looking at the opportunities in Sydney as much as the, the pricing barriers, but um, the facts are the facts. And, uh, and um, I'm sure when you, when, like you said, you take the emotion out of it mm. and you look at it um, for what it is, um, it's undeniable. So it was scrapped in 2014, 2015 after Kurt Tippett and Buddy Franklin. They haven't won a premiership since then. 
It's the biggest housing boom since 1989. And this is completely unbiased. I've got no dog in this fight whatsoever. But the facts are the facts. You look at Sydney house prices, Kingy, and rent for that matter. 1.5 million for the average house in Sydney. It's 667,000 in Adelaide. It's a million in Melbourne. And it's about 700 grand in Brisbane. They lose Hewitt and they lose Dawson. And they're paying 100% of their salary cap each and every year to keep these players. It's like one state having no income tax. And one having tax. I mean, it'd be a lot easier to attract players with no income tax. Is, are, are we, is it ridiculous to think that there shouldn't be an allowance? I think it is for Sydney to have a bit more money in their cap and their soft cap. You know, speak to Dean Cox, who's gone from Perth to Sydney as an assistant coach, what he's got to pay for rent for his family. It's a nightmare. Do you have any sympathy for the Swans and the Giants with the cost of living to live there? I do, but only for those that are are going to struggle to, to, to make ends meet. You know, it, it's, it, I find it hard on one hand to pay the cost of living allowance and then see them sign Lance Franklin yep. to a 10-year, $10 million deal. I, I find that difficult to balance out. The only answer for me, the simple answer is for the AFL to purchase real estate and to allow those on, on the, the absolute bottom rung earning capacity to stay there free of charge. I mean, they could do that. They could, they could own mm. their own properties – and then at the end, because the players that are earning money on losing money on the way in are winning it on the way out with their real invest, real estate mm-hmm. investments. We don't get any of that back. So if, you can't just take it one way, and you can't have an unfair competition. I, I don't think you can give them a cost of living allowance over and above what you're giving other states. Yeah, I, I just think it's going to develop into a story. House prices up thirty percent in Sydney. They were already unaffordable. How's Finn? How's Finn Callahan, who's drafted to the Giants, going to? going to buy a house. So your point's right to, to look after those at the bottom end, whereas Josh Rochelle has gone to Adelaide and needs 600000 to buy He's a house. He's already bought a house, I heard. Well, bought probably has. Houses, yeah. Well, I'm telling you, Finn Callahan hasn't. one 736 736 if you Why want to Why can't have the AFL that. buy a house, buy, a, buy multiple houses and, and, and have them in Sydney? And they could have them as an AFL investment. Yeah, I think it opens grey areas as well. You know, Tom Harley is a prosperous place to live. Then, you, you know, sponsors come on board. And then there's the grey area of what's allowed and what's not. I'm not suggesting anything untoward, but it does cause a risk. So do you have like, a lower salary cap in Adelaide, in South Australia? Do we no, lower, we have, do we, we, do we, we diminish the, your salary cap? No, we have the, well, you could. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, you absolutely could. That's that's what I'm saying. You, you could um, diminish the salary cap in Brisbane. You could have you could have less. And it's more the um, the soft cap as well, because it's it's the assistant coaches that are earning $100,000, not Buddy Franklin earning a million, that I'm also have some sympathy for. But Sydney have to pay the same in their soft cap as what Port Adelaide have to pay. It doesn't. Doesn't seem fair. I know it's been a long time since we've had this debate, and some people find it tiresome. But I reckon it's going to be a relatively big story this year. The SEN poll on the SEN app this morning: which team is most likely to miss the AFL finals? St Kilda, forty-five percent. Only nine yeah. percent of you think that the Bombers will miss the finals out of those four. And Carlton, as always in February, a lot of positivity, a <laughs> lot of positivity out of the blue. Where so have if you got, got them? Me, Where have you got them? Um, have a think about it. Let, let me sit, let me sit on that. It. If you've got the SEN app, click on the show. Every Friday, we've got a live poll going. We'd love to get you interactive. It's time now for the 7.30 News Headlines. Bit of guitar happening this morning. I jumped the gun there. Apologies for that. Thanks to Keezer. Let's go through some more sport. Go through life stronger with Keezer. Australia's retained the women's ashes, claiming the trophy for the fourth straight time. 27-run victory. In the first three uh, one-day internationals to take an unassailable 8-4 lead uh, with the T20 victory, they uh, had a couple of washouts in the drawn test. It, it was an average batting performance, I thought. They made just over uh, 200, and then England looked to be cruising, needing about 4.2 and over, and um, the Aussies got it done, including Darcy Brown. She's an absolute star. She took four for 34. She was the match winner with the ball. Hey, Pat Cummins, oh. big story around this. It is the biggest story, isn't it? Tom yep. Morris will join us uh, at about 8.40 this morning. He, he broke this story, really. He's led the, the charge on this. But Pat Cummings has had so many opportunities to show his support for embattled coach Justin Langer. And again, yesterday, during the extraordinary press conference, uh, he failed to do so. Cummins said speculation was not healthy and he didn't want to add to it by giving a public opinion that could hold little weight. I'm not sure if it holds little weight, but it's uh, um, it's been an unbelievable watch, hasn't it, to see those from one generation support Langer and the current 
the incumbents really distanced themselves, Kane. I haven't seen anything like this before. Uh, I, I, I failed to get my head around it, particularly when he's taken the feedback on board and changed some aspects of you know what was um, offensive to the players, if that's the right term to word, and then you get the results that they've had. It's like a premiership winning coach getting the chop. I'd, yeah. Anyway, we'll speak to Tom about that. I think he's got some more developments on that story as well. The CA board is meeting today. We'll be all over that. Uh, there's news out of the Winter Olympics. Uh, Laura Peel and figure skater Brendan Kerry, they're both at their third Winter Games. They're going to be the flag bearers for the Australian Winter Olympic team for tonight's opening ceremony. Now, it's the first time at the Winter Olympics we've had two flag bearers, but not uncommon. We saw it with Paddy Mills and Kate Campbell share the honour at the Summer Games. The Kangas have signed the young gun, Taran Thomas, and he'll stay at Arden Street till at least the end of 2024. And if the Tasmanian team doesn't come in, he'll stay forever uh, after signing a two-year contract extension on big dollars. Big dollar. Love. Glenn loves throwing around like, like sugar down there at, the, at Arden Street. What, what, what would you guess that he's been paid? Ah, uh, what would I get? Oh, he had a fantastic season. He I did. He, his oh, back half of the year was really good at that mid-forward. No, it wouldn't be that much. No. You, 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 I need to pull you. List management, I don't think, and the financial side of the list build, Kenny, I don't think she'll strengthen. If, if there. Zach Williams is getting nine hundred thousand dollars, if, um, if imagine what he'd be getting if he played in Sydney. I was going to say Mav Weller, but it's Lockie With Weller. If Lockie, if Lockie Weller is getting eight hundred grand, I'm telling you, Taron Thomas is getting six hundred. Not to stay, no way. Not not to stay. To, you get more to leave. Williams has got has, has achieved more leaving a well, club. Well, he got nine. Well, has so achieved got... more leaving a club. Yeah, yeah, they got nine and eight. And Ta- yeah. Thomas got six. No, nah, he'd get a so bit. So what, what, the average wage is 400. You're telling me that Taron Thomas isn't 20% better than I think he'd be getting player. about, I think about 400 for the next two years would be about right. Oh, geez, they've, they've stitched him up if that's the case. There's hey, no big, cash no. here. There's no cash. No cash. Big story um, today. For those of you who are just joining us, the Nine Network and two football journalists, that's Caroline Wilson and Sam McClure, have issued apologies and retractions to Collective Minds for articles and broadcasts about an Adelaide Crows pre-season camp. They have also agreed to pay legal costs. What does it mean? Well, it means that the Nine and Age paper will publish statements on page three of the Sunday Age, February the 6th, and on Nine's Wide World of Sports website, the Age website, on Monday, February the 7th for a week. Um, Just part of what they said in their apology, in July 2029, published and broadcast a number of pieces reporting on the Adelaide Crows camp in 2018. The publications made a number of statements about Adam, uh, Amon Wolf, that is, Derek Little and Collective Mind. Nine acknowledges that Workplace SA made no findings of wrongdoing against Collective Mind. And Nine acknowledges that the camp was run in good faith with the players' interests front of mind. Tom Morris won't be able to comment on the specifics of it, but the art of journalism when he joins us, and is there a, you know, a risk of journalists saying it's, it's too hard? I'm not, I'm not doing a, a lengthy investigation into a story that I'm passionate about because of this action. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, laying fold on any either party here. But yeah, it's a big, it's a big day in in journalism. Really, we'll ask Tom Morris about I, that. I look forward to hearing from Caro and Sam. Mm. I mean, they're the ones they we talk, want to hear though? from now. Can, can they... Well, if they're apologising, I, I assume so. I mean, they're allowed to say what, what they're apologising for specifically. Mm. It's, it doesn't read like it doesn't read like they've uh, got something incorrect in their in their analysis of what went down at the camp. It does. It just feels like they've damaged the, their business significantly with the, the attacks on on the leaders. Struggling with back pain, time to try Keezer and go through life stronger with Keezer. On the other side of this, the captain of the Hawks, Ben McAvoy. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4dDoors.com.au. Breakfast with Kane and King. 16 minutes to 8 o'clock. It's Captain's Day with Kane and Kingy. A little bit later on, Sydney's newest co-captain, Callum Mills, is going to join us. But right now, a man who's going to captain the Hawks for the second season running announced yesterday is Ben McAvoy. Ben, thanks for your time and congratulations. No, thank you very much. Yeah, good morning, fellas. I think a lot of people are interested in how each team appoints a captain. Can you shed some light on how Hawthorne do it? Uh, yeah, look, for a long time, um, Hawthorne normally had a, a player vote, basically to elect a leadership group, and then 
uh, that group goes away um, with the um, coach and footy manager and those sorts of things, and we work out who's the um, best candidate for, for captaincy. Um, uh, new coach this year, obviously, Sam Mitchell, a um, bit of a different perspective. Um, so given I was the incumbent captain, he'd taken a while to just um, assess things and, and see what he thought and um, and was really comfortable that I was still the best man for the job. And um, so we've done it a little bit backwards this year and that we've started from that point and, and we'll work the rest around that. It's a great endorsement, Ben, for you as as the main man, and obviously it would have rocked you a little bit if it hadn't gone that way. Can, can I ask how you assess your own captaincy? How have you looked back at your, at your stint so far? Uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm I'm always looking back to see where I can do things better. Um, but last year was obviously a really challenging year for the club, lots of st- stuff going on, but. Um, what I was determined to do from the start was to to just be all in and, and give it everything that I had, which I certainly did. And we we did a lot of work, um, you know, off field last year, working on um, you know our, our culture, the way we do things, the standards we hold ourselves to. Um, which you know, even though into a new coach this year, but a, a lot of valuable work was done last year. This year, I'll probably shift my focus a lot to, um, to how we can get the results on field um haven't done some of that groundwork so and in particular my own performance it um it did take a little bit of i probably spent too much energy on the on off field stuff last year so certainly looking to to try and play the best footy i can and lead that way this year in particular yeah we've t- we've talked a lot about max gorn's captaincy at, at melbourne and the influence that he's had. he's been good for ruck captains that's one thing that we'd have to sign off on early ben but have you have you had an opportunity to see how he's gone about it and, and the, the different tack that he's taken in, in his in his early days as Melbourne captain? Uh, no, not really. It's, it's it's really hard to see from outside, um, you know, to understand the impact that people have me, but full credit to Max. Um, done an unbelievable job and, and to to help take his, his team to a, a premiership. Um, yeah, and as you say, done a a great thing for Ruckman to, um, it's a bit like the fast bowling thing in cricket, isn't it? Um, put us on the map a little bit, but yeah, um, yeah no, so, so full full credit to him, but I think it's really hard to understand um, the impact that the people are having when you're outside the four walls. With a developing group, and I think we'll all agree that's the where Hawthorne are at, what's your preference around who supports you from a leadership point of view? Uh, we're still working through that, um, but we think it's really important to, um, to try and get a, a bit of a cross section, we, um, we've tried to remove some of the typical, you know, hierarchy that we've seen at footy clubs over a long period of time. Where it's, um, you know, particularly with the re- leadership model that's, that most clubs have used for a long time, where you know the, the leadership groups up the top and everyone's, everyone else is sort of underneath. So we're still exploring what we think is best for our group. But um, yeah, what's really important is to is to get a, a cross section. And you know, I'm obviously the, the oldest player on the list, so um, you know, I need need help to, um, you know, work in and, and connect with these younger guys. So that'll be important. When you took over, I don't think it wasn't an obvious choice. It wasn't, you know, the one that everyone was pointing to. So who are the next ones? Give it, give us some names that you see that have leadership potential from the under 25 kind of group. Um, well, I think it's really exciting for the club um, long term. Um, you know, you've, Got the likes of um, I mean, Sicily's not quite under 25, but he's one that, that people have spoken about. It'll be really, really interesting to see how Sis goes, um, you know, coming back after um, a pretty rough couple of years. Um, I think that, that he's one that has, has real potential. Um, Will Day is a young one. He's, he's a really special kid um, that I've really enjoyed working with. Um, and they, even, to be honest, um, some of the young guys have come in this year like a um, that Connor McDonald and Josh Ward, they're, they're so um, confident and not in a, um, you know, an arrogant young cocky sort of way. That's just, they're, they're, they're good at footy. They're confident in what they do. They speak well. So, um, yeah, I don't really like um, putting names out there, but I think that what we'll try to do over, um, you know, the next little period of time is, is put a lot of work into our leadership development so that um, when the time does come to, to hand over the reins, um, we've got an abundance of guys to choose from. Hawthorne skipper Ben McAvoy is with us on SEN this morning. Now, Ben, 
I've, I've been hard on Hawthorne. I've called them a mess. And, and that's out of the players' control, really, with what's going on with Clarkson and board level and with the list that you've got. That, that's my view on it from an outsider's point of view. Tell me why you're not a mess. G- give us a positive picture of what you see day-to-day with this club and where you're at. Uh, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't think it's unfair to, to say um, how we looked last year was messy. Um, I thought that myself, so I, I don't shy away from that, that it looked messy from the outside. What I'm really confident of now is, is that we've got to the, to the right spot. Um, so once the, the board made their decision that, um, that Clarko's time was, was going to come to an end, it took us a little while to work through that um, and you know you've got a lot of lot of different people in a footy club all, all trying to do the right thing. It doesn't doesn't necessarily mean you agree. So, but what I think we've got now is, is to the best possible point that we could in that um, Sam's at the helm and, and, and we're looking forward. So um, it's just been unbelievably positive um, in terms of uh, doing things differently. And us older guys um, being challenged to, to view things differently. That's really exciting. That that gets you out of bed in the morning. So. Um, and and the young group that we've got coming through, there's just there's just a really good feel um, that you know we're, we're we're trying something new and exciting, and um, it's just really fun to to come to work every day. That's what excites us too, Ben. I think we're looking for the next version of of the Hawks. You had a fantastic era with Alistair Clarkson, that's gone. Well, give us an idea of what that will look like. You're talking about a new challenge, new opportunities uh, for older players. Is it the style of play? Is that what you're talking about? What will it look like under Sam? Yeah, some of the style of play will be different um, for sure. So, um, you know, I mean, we're working on all aspects of the game. We've, we've spent a lot of time on our, on our defence in the last couple of weeks, but it um, goes without saying we need to improve at the um, at the attacking side of the game with, with ball in hand. We need to score a bit more. I think we've only scored um, 100 points maybe once in the last couple of years. So, um, you know, we need to get better at that side of it. Um, but I think that uh, ha- having ha- had sort of a clean slate, a new coach come in, it, it feels like everything's open. It's almost like even as far as selection, it's like, OK, everyone's on the table. And that's not something we've really sp- spoken about. I said that's the case. It just, just has that feel that um, there's a really even spread and, and there's so many... Um, you know, guys in the in the middle of our list where it's like, well, you know, who who will play and who want to be really exciting to see um, over the next month, who can step up and, and put their hand up. So, um, and I think that just uh, just viewing things through a different lens, you know, with, with a different coach, with, um, every individual coach has a, has a different perspective on things, and um, just getting that fresh look. And like I said. Um, we think there's some things that are given in the game, but um, there's always someone like Clark I did when he was young who comes along and views it in a different way. And, and Sam's got some intricacies like that, which are, are really exciting for us. We've got a lot of players coming back from injury. Can you give me one quick line on each of these names? Where's James Sicily? Yeah, going really well. Playing in, forward in match, or back? Playing, doing everything. Yeah, yeah, playing back. Yeah. Jack Gunston? Yeah, did his first match play yesterday um, and classy as ever. So hopefully touch wood, um, he can stay on the park. Jarman Impey? Uh, yeah, Jars is just having a little bit of a spell at the moment. Um, he's got a little bit of soreness in his foot, I believe. Um, so he's only uh, off for a week or so and then um, you're very excited what he can bring in the back end for us. You touched on Will Day, but it, it, where's he at with his progression and where's he likely to play? Uh, well... I, I don't know. I, I think he's back end. I think he's best suited in the back end. Um, Will's still got a very sort of young and maturing body, so they're, they're really taking um, the time with his rehab. So um, he probably we won't see him in, in um, many, if any, of the practice games, um, but still hopeful to have him available right at the start of the season. Ben, thanks so much for your time, and congratulations yes. on another huge honour. Well done. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, guys. The Hawks take on Richmond in their first preseason game on March the 5th. It's six minutes to eight. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4 Breakfast with Kane and Kingman. 
And if you're tuning in for the first time, thank you. In the first couple of hours, we spoke to Ben McAvoy, the new captain of the Hawks. We discussed at length the new concussion crackdown in the AFL and David King's strong thoughts on that. Kingy, before we get to Callum Mills, you've got an update in relation to star jockey Damien Oliver. Yeah, Andrew Bensley's just posted on his Twitter that the decision's been made that he won't ride today at the Valley, but replacements are being sorted, as you would expect. And it's being worked out whether he rides tomorrow at Caulfield or not. So that sounds really positive going forward. So if it's just a decision as to whether he rides at the big meeting tomorrow, then it points in a great direction for Damien's health. Good news. Our next guest is here for Otis Eyewear. Summer looks better through glass. The youngest Sydney captain since Paul Kelly. It's a fair rap. Cool. Callum Mills is his name. Uh, Millsy, thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Congratulations. How does it feel? Uh, extremely exciting, to be honest. Um, really humbled and honoured. Um, such a great footy club. And, you know, to be named co-captain alongside Dane and Luke, um, yeah, as I said, extremely honoured. What, what do you need to do to get rid of those other two first, Kane, before you go? What do you, <laughs> need, what do you need to do to be the sole captain of Sydney these days? <laughs> it's, it's a tough gig, isn't it? There's not, there hasn't been too many of them, but um, I'm pumped to be alongside um, Luke and Dane. We've we're uh, we're all sort of our own individuals. We're pretty different from each other, but I think that's what that's what makes it work. Well, what will you bring specifically? What what strength do you bring to this this trio that that got you the nod? I think just leading by example, just with training standards, and and I think well, that's been the feedback that I've been given as a way about I go about things and um, the balance between taking footy seriously and then being able to switch off and and supporting the group when when it's more casual need. Callum, the, the, the younger generation get a bad rap at times and we're seeing it with the Australian cricket team. Like pl- player power and they have too much influence and some would say they're a bit sensitive. Oh, Is that I harsh? You would. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just think it's, it's different. I mean, every generation changes and, um, you know, there's still core principles that every generation sort of has and this younger generation still, still has the one before, but um, I think it always changes and, just got to evolve with it sometimes. So John Longmire seems from the outside as a, you know, from the older school, like a, you know, he'll tell, he'll tell you straight and we've seen him, you know, lose his mind in the box and get quite <laughs> testy and shirty with the media, if, if that's the right term. So how can a player have an influence over him? And is he willing to listen to what you guys have got to say? Clearly he is. Yeah. I mean, he did get coached by Dennis Pagan and I've heard stories about <laughs> um, Dennis Pagan. So but no, he, he's awesome. Horse is um, really amazing to work with. He really values the player's opinion and um, the feel of, of what we think that's happening around the club. And, um, you know, without his sort of openness to, to want to understand our perspective, it, it doesn't really work. So he's been tremendous in terms of, um, to me personally, being able to develop me um, in a leadership sense as well as a person. There's a couple of things you don't want to hear as a player. Callum, and, and I spoke to John Longmire at the start of pre-season. I said, look, you had a pretty good year. Ball movement's really good. Defensive's really good. You know, blah, blah, blah. What, what are you missing? He said, oh, straight away. Contested footy. The top four teams in the competition last year were the preliminary finalists. We've got to get tougher. And I thought, oh, no. Oh, no. I <laughs> thought the Swans pre-season's going to be brutal. How's it been? Yeah, it's, it's been solid. Um, it's been really solid. And, you know, we spoke about that as soon as we got back, that there's some things in footy that never change. And um, we strongly believe that contestant ball was important 50 years ago and it will be in 50 years' time. So that's a real staple of our game that we've got to get back to, um, obviously, aspire to be a top four position because, you know, as Horst mentioned, that, that's where finals are won and lost. So um, yeah, we're doing everything we can in this preseason to get back there. So, so where does it leave you? I mean, we always are keen to, to place teams or put them in brackets, and I know... I know John Longmire is always famous this time of the year for saying we all start on zero wins and it's a, an even competition, but the reality is it's not an even competition. You, you've had a fantastic couple of years of, of a list build and spiked into a top four, top five type position for the bulk of last year. Are you a premiership contender in 2022 in your eyes? <laughs> it's, um, it's, a, it's a big question, but um, as cliche as this sounds, it's it's completely different to what it was last year. Last year, I think we came in with zero expectations of, um, you know, I'm pretty sure every captain last year didn't vote us to make final. So I think 
things have sort of changed and there's a bit more expectation for us to take the next step. But um, we're pretty adamant on, we understand that there's a few areas in our game, such as contested ball. And, and we also want to strengthen the stuff that we're really good at, which is our ball movement and things like that. And I think if we um, can do that while developing and getting players to take the next step, I think the results will sort of take care of itself. But there is a big journey ahead and, and it's a big step to take. But um, the best part is everyone's willing and, and been working really hard this preseason to try to get that to happen. I'm always interested whether teams address previous disappointments. You, you miss the elimination final loss. It was by one point. It was unexpected. Do, do you, have you looked at that game at all? Yeah, we have. And we've spoken about it and um, a bit more about sort of the feel of it as stuff. As, as much as the vision, it's also important to talk about um, what what you felt out there and, and you know what other teams sort of saw a view out there and, and the way that we want to take the next step. And um, the big thing to come out of that was, um, you know, got to be tough and you've got to win contested ball. And, um, you know, that's what that's what finals are made of. And things go to the next level. And I think a lot of our playing group haven't experienced finals before. And it was a really good taste. And um, the best part about it is everyone was bitterly disappointed. There was no one that was just happy to be there. It was... Mm. Um, we we really missed an opportunity. We believed, and um, you know we're going to do everything to, we can to rectify it and, and make sure we're winning finals games. So fans hear that, and we hear it, and we've got to be tougher, and we've got to work on test, contested ball. You've watched the game. Take me into the meeting if you can. Is it an example, a clip? Is it multiple? Errol Goulden, just for example, just plucking your name. You weren't hard enough in that contest, and then you show it and you slow it down, and you get his view, or or is it not as individual? Is that what? What does the meeting look like? Um, I, th- I think there's there's two sides of it. There's definitely individual moments where you talk about and you expect more from your teammates, and you do you do call it out. But the other part is there's a bit more of a structural side of it. Do you think when you talk contested ball, everyone thinks that you know you just got to put your head over it and win a ball? But there's actually a lot more to it. Loose loose ball gets a considered contested ball, so it's mm. you know you shape around the contest, and you know it's not just one person winning it. It's hey, we need you to be in that position to allow someone to get over to the ball, you know what I mean, and and allow support for the player to, to go 100% and, and get the loose ball, if that makes sense. Callum, now listen, Kane's gone big this morning on the cost of living allowance for the Sydney Swans and the GWS Giants being a fraction higher because of the, the challenges with living arrangements. So I'm going to canvas what your living <laughs> arrangements actually are. What, what sort of, where are you living at the moment? What suburb? I'm in Paddington. Oh, Paddington! Oh dear! Oh, this, this is not going well for Kane's <laughs> argument. How many, no. what, what do we? What do we got? A uh, double front, four bedroom. What are we looking at? No, no, a skinny terrace that just fits. I think two people wide, two bedroom, one bar. Two bedroom, one bar. Is there a car Paddington. park. Hang on. How many cars does it no, fit? No car. Off street. No car park. Off street. Oh. oh, hang on. That's a little, a little negative there. How many? How many people are living with you at the moment? Uh, me and my partner. Oh, so no, no other players in there noted. Okay. Do, do you think? Do, do you think it's really difficult in a, in a in a sensible conversation? Is it more difficult for youngsters coming to Sydney than it is to those you speak of around the competition that go to other clubs in other states? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm um, yeah. I'm I massively agree in it and. The hard part is that you're talking to a Melbourne audience that haven't necessarily lived in Sydney. Mm. Um, you know, I think once you once you move up here, you realise how expensive rent is. I think that's the massive factor to it all is 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 literally the rental factor. And there's a lot of blokes coming up here in their first year and and paying you know double to what you hear from other clubs. So it is it is a tough thing, and um, especially with the go home factor, there's not many. Sydney AFL players out there. The, so once you have the cost of allowance doubled upon missing home and things like that, it, it definitely is a, a it, tough play. Well said. Yeah, the argument was going really well until I just Googled the mean house price in Paddington. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I've and, done the same these thing. <laughs> These aren't these aren't big houses as well. They're skinny little terraces. So, oh, um, it's gone. Cold is gone. <sighs> it's, a, it's a topic that's going to be. Well, honestly, we'll be talking about it. I guarantee. You. Uh, Callum, before we let you go, you feel, feels to me like you've been around forever. Uh, and I Google your age, and you're 24. Uh, you finished fifth in the best and fairest. Missed a couple of games with injury. Um, how far off are you from completely being at the peak of your powers? 
Uh, I guess it's an unknown. Um, I'm doing everything I can to get there as quickly as possible, though. Um, and I think that's the main thing with this group as well. You know, we've got a lot of young players that are doing everything they can to fast track um, our career, which ultimately, you know, in terms allows team success because you don't want to be a team that, you know, has a lot of talent and, and you know, media talk mm. about you having talent and you're a young list for five years and don't have anything to show for it. So, um, you know, I can guarantee you that we're doing everything possible to, to get better as individuals, which will help out as a team. Quick one word, or sort of one sentence answer, sorry, on, on these youngsters coming through and, and an assessment of their pre-season. Chad Warner? Uh, very explosive. I think he's um, he's had a massive pre-season and he, he looks like a man and he's he's playing some really strong footy. So I'm, I'm bloody excited to see what Chad can do this year. Justin McInerney? Uh, quick. You know he's using he's using his speed this year and could be a bit more off the half back, which will be exciting for a lot of fans. I think Tom McCartan. Ah, strong. He um, he's another one that's turned into a, a big, big strong lad. He can um, he can throw around big boys now, which is really exciting. A youngster Lance Franklin. <laughs> Lance Franklin, um, young as ever, Lancey. <laughs> he uh, he's been training a lot and um, he's he's bloody awesome for for the young group. Awesome, mate. Right, mate. Listen, look, it's an exciting time in Sydney. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be co-captain of this group? We've just got to find a way to get those other two out of the way. Rampy and <laughs> Parker. Callum, um, congratulations to captain a club with the with the history and I guess the respect of the competition has been there for such a long time and the culture you've built. Um, it's a huge honour. We appreciate your time this morning. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot for having me on. Callum Mills, our guest bedroom. this morning. Two bedrooms. Yes, I know. In Single Paddington. Fronted Paddington. No repayments. Amazing. No, I, I would think there'd be uh, some sort of mortgage oh. on there. So, so the median price for a two-bedroom place in Paddington is two point two million. Yeah. yeah, and that backs up my argument. And you heard him passionately speak about and it. He's got four of them. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Otis Eyewear, the, Sonny's the, the look good. The winner is Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> they, they feel great and they stand up to the Aussie summit. Kogan Credit Cards. No annual fees, amazing rewards and complimentary Kogan First Membership. Smarter, quieter, safer. Garage doors redefined. Discover more at 4 dooroscomau Breakfast with Kane and King. Gone right around the country each and every Friday morning into Adelaide, WA and Tassie, the we top end, the Sunraysia, Bunbury, Geelong, <laughs> Bendigo, Ballarat. Good morning to you, Mark McGowan, who's up nice and early in WA listening to us. You can get involved on the SEN app as well. We've got a poll up there. It's a new way to interact with us. But as always, the main ways, give us a call. Line's available right now, one 736 736 Kingy, it's time for our weekly top performers thanks to Indian Motorcycle, America's first motorcycle company. Who has stood out as the best performer of the week for you? There's only one. There is only one there this is. week. Ash Barty, your yeah. first Australian Open for almost 50 years. She's an unbelievable winner. A gracious person, very humble. How could you not have her your number one this week? She's up there. You stole her first. You demanded it. You've been quite demanding this well, week. Yeah, demanded yeah. the quiz. You got the demanded name. The name. Ash. It's something. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to say Tom. King. Just bring in <laughs> <content>. <laughs> I'm going to say Tom Brady because Tom Brady. I, I come from it as if you're an athlete, you're all in. And this guy lives and breathes it and wants to be the best player for 352 days of the year for 22 years. Seven Super Bowls. He's played in 10. They will never, ever do that again. So, uh, you know, it's only rare occasions you look to American sport. But he's retired um, this week and he's my weekly top performer. Who's he comes, yours? He comes from your bracket, though, you know, the... Avoc marathon running, yeah. sort of avocado Avoc salad. Avoc yeah, avocado <laughs> ice cream he eats. He, he doesn't even allow himself to eat ice cream. <laughs> avocado yeah, ice cream. he's in your, your mould. Hey, um, Richmond don't have a captain yet. We've spoken to, it's Captain's Day here this morning. We've spoken to Ben McAvoy and Callum Mills. You know, Pendlebury's locked in as, as skipper. Most clubs have locked theirs in. Richmond haven't. Let's have a listen to Jack Revolt yesterday. If the club wanted me to do it, I'd just step up and do it. And when that person does get announced, um, they'll have uh, a, a lot of really strong lieutenants around them. If the club wants me to do it, I'll do it. Jack Revolt at his age. Kingy, your thoughts firstly on his comments and also 
the topic in general. Love Jack, love it. And, and he would do it for Richmond he'd, and he'd do a great job. He'd be passionate, we know about that, and you'd know exactly how he feels. He wears his heart in his sleeve, but he's older than Trent Cotchin. So they're not they're not moving off from from Cotchin to Rewell. Oh, look, it, it is interesting how young, it, how much does age play a part in this? At what age is your threshold? And it'll be different for every person or every every listener this morning, and even yourself, Kane. Do you, do you go mm. right down to a you know to a Jack Graham who's who's twenty four years of age, or do you do you do you go to Dylan Grimes who's still thirty himself? I mean, how how young do you have to go to have that next change, or do you just go? To Dustin Martin, you say he's 30, but he's going to play for another five, six years. Oh, it's, it, it's fascinating to me, this. I think where they're going to land, they're going to land on Grimes. That, that's, that's my gut feel on where it lands, and, and that's sort of, I think, the gut feel of most Richmond fans. But I'm really keen on the Tiger Army's thoughts on this one. Don't overlook the obvious. I think the obvious is Dustin Martin. Is, is it not? I, I, I reckon if you went back and you asked, some great players of the past that perhaps you know weren't obvious captains but had the potential to be. Is there any regret on not captaining your club? You know, Buddy Franklin. Is there any Buddy? Is there any regret that you weren't a captain of Sydney or Hawthorne? I think he could do a great job, Dustin Martin, and he could do it in his own way, and he could do it with the support of a leadership group. And he doesn't have to do media weekly. He doesn't want to do that. He doesn't have to. But the obvious one for me is Martin, and I've said this. A couple of times. Don't overlook the obvious. Now, of course, you have to convince him to do it. But from everything I hear, he's invested. He's one of the hardest trainers. He never misses a game apart from you know missing the, the five games with the kidney this year. It's the, he's played 20-plus games every year. Every year he's, he's been there. He's going to be there for, I reckon he'll play for another seven years. I think he'd do a terrific job. And 95% of captaincy kingy, if you ask me, and you're from the Wayne Carey mould, the most influential on-field leader that I've ever seen, is playing well on game day. That's 95% of what captaincy is. Yeah, I don't know if it is anymore. I right. think those numbers have shifted a little because it is a lot about uh, the environment and the culture and allowing everyone to be their best, allowing them to be individual. It has shifted slightly. It's not all about the best talent winning a flag anymore because the talent club to club, there's not a great disparity across the top 10 teams. There really isn't. It's more what you can get out of those guys. I think the captain sets that tone. I look at Toby Green. For years, he hasn't been considered captain. But his influence on that team, game day, is as is that he holds that mantle. Great example. It's, a great, it's the Dustin Martin example. It's, it backs up my point. Do you, do you, you, it seems to me you don't have the confidence he could do it or would want to do it. Uh, I don't know. whether If he wants to do it, you'd be hard-pressed to, to go past yeah. him. I mean... It, Imagine Dustin Martin walking to Damien Harbick's office and saying, I want to captain the place. I mean, yeah. how do you answer that? Yeah. How could you say, oh, look, we've got better candidates? I mean, <laughs> I think Jack Graham is one a name that doesn't get mentioned often enough. I think Nick Vloston, the way he plays, it's a little bit Luke Hodge-like, mm. uh, much-loved members of, of the group. Um, it, it is a hard one. Do you go best player, biggest influence, or do you go someone who can understand all aspects of the footy club? Who can understand the... The guy who's just trying mm. to, you know, struggling week to week, trying to make ends meet, as a and, and have empathy for the superstar. Like, understand that Dustin's on a different level. Can Dustin relate with that? I'm sure he can. But for me, I think they'll find someone in that middle bracket. I, I don't think they'll go to Dustin. No, I, I agree. I agree with you. I think they'll land on Grimes and Tiger fans joining the conversation with us. So for double three ninety eight eleven sixteen, there'll be some disappointment though. If you know, in in seven years' time, we think greatest. Finals performer we've ever seen, biggest on field uh, presence at the biggest See, club that wasn't a captain that had the potential to be. Yeah, and a couple of texts coming through now on the temper text. Kane Lambert is the Smoky Boys. No mm. name attached to that, but I like that. I like that sort of that story. The backstory to Kane Lambert becoming the star that he is is something for all. You know, a team that's had such success, it's really difficult to separate those on that next bracket below Dustin. Mm because they've all had it. But I, I do think they'll go for someone in their mid-20s rather than someone 30-plus. What do you reckon, Tigers fans? Indian Motorcycle, America's first motorcycle company since 1901. Make the first move. Up next, it's the Friday Agenda. Thanks to your company. It's time for the Friday Agenda. Thanks to Charlie Battisti and Co., Melbourne's most trusted repairer of prestige German vehicles. This one's for you, Kingy. 
Are you surprised that Wayne Carey has dug up, dug up old wounds? Before you answer that, he's on the new season of SAS Australia on Channel 7. Here's some of the promotional material that they're using. I'm Wayne Carey. This guy is a train wreck. I slept with a teammate's wife. A teammate. That's haunted me for 20 years. And the spin-off to that is going to be headlines everywhere. I just pluck one, Women's Day, um, they've done an article on it, the cheating scandal that blew up the AFL, how SAS Australia star Wayne Carey was caught having an affair with a teammate's wife. You lived it. I thought historically Wayne had wanted to move on from all of this. Now, to get him on, they, they wanted the value clearly, but are you surprised they've gone there? Not surprised. No, I think it's the, the most asked question that I get. Yeah. It, it's still about this, tw- you know, 20 years on. So... How, how could he get away from it? You know, could never get away from it. I think that he's, um, it's, it's been an ongoing regret, hasn't it? Nothing will change. Nothing will change. And unfortunately, we've got to move on. It's a big story. Every time we do something like this, you put yourself up there on SAS Australia. They're going to, they're going to probe this, this zone, aren't they? Yeah. There's, there's nothing sure but he would have known that was coming. He would have known that was part of the package. So I guess we want to move on from it, but when, he goes on there and, you know, this guy's calling him a train wreck. The, one, of the, one of the judges or the, yeah. the, the, the commandos. I want to go on this show, by the way. That's a topic you do. for another day. Yeah, but I desperately want to go on this show. I'm having what, what, no what luck. Are you going, what value are you going to add apart from my, marathon my running and <laughs> drinking sure you bean? Well, I think there'd be a lot of people out there that would like to see me get tortured, which is basically what <laughs> they do on this show. Now, my people have reached out to their people. We, can, we heard, could do an in-house version. We've heard no response. So that's, that's, that shows you how I'm going. So, so you... you <laughs> Could this could this help? Could we finally put a full stop to this? Like he's going to get it out there. They're going to put it all. In. There's going to be spin-off articles everywhere. Could we finally move on from this? You know what? I don't think Wayne cares. Okay. He's apologised. Right. He's done what he needed to do. Uh, and, and it's time for, for, for him to move on. Clearly, the uh, the train wreck comment doesn't help. I've got one for mm. you, and more, more specific to football. And this is what the Friday agenda is going to become, I think. As we get deeper into the – or to the start of the footy season and in it, this will be – this will be spectacular. I'm looking forward to you mm. delisting a few players of a Friday, a couple we'll of coaches. Yep. Uh, I want to ask you about the Port Adelaide situation. Charlie Dixon is requiring surgery now, and that'll be a significant setback at the wrong end of pre-season. Do you accept that he's going to miss the first month of the AFL season proper, or do you race him to be half fit, 80% fit uh, for round one? And what happens? What happens if you do that and he has a down year? What impact does that have on where you think Port Adelaide will finish in 2022? It's a really good dilemma. He's 31. He looked frustrated last year. They, they could Each morning of game day, there was five or six occasions where they thought, are we going to withdraw Charlie out? He's, he's got a niggle. He's got another niggle. He looked frustrated. He's got four defenders hanging off him each week. And he looked an angry player. And he, he wasn't a disaster. He kicked you know, 48 goals last year and, and held down the spot, but he wasn't at his best. I think we'd all admit that. So I prefer the the first part of y- your suggestion is that they get him absolutely right and get him back. He's had uh, leg injuries before and ankle injuries before and get him right. I saw him at my brother's uh, daughter's first birthday last weekend and he's, he was in really good spirits. But-